Sometimes to see change, you got to move to a totally different location. My awareness of who God wanted me to be was growing, but I was still in close proximity to the source of my sin. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit was beating me down. I knew that the first opportunity that I had to change locations, that I had to do it for my good and to maintain my momentum in my walk with Jesus Christ. So I moved. I moved to a new location. I didn't know anyone. Um, I was on my own. I packed up my car and found myself where I wasn't in close proximity to anything familiar. And I had no one else to trust in but the Lord. And when I get to this new location, temptation immediately presents itself. Uh, some of the same things that I was able to do when I moved from the previous location, that temptation came. Um, so some parts of it um, I was able to overcome and abstain from and avoid, but there were still some situations um, where I knew that this location would really strengthen my relationship with the Lord. So I'm about five and a half months in. I'm close to graduating the program that I moved um, to this new location for, and the unthinkable happens. I'm in the gym, I'm playing basketball, I have my keys and my flip flops. And after we get finished playing basketball, my car is stolen. So here it is. I had everything in my car. My wallet, my phone, everything. Keep it in mind that I barely knew anybody here. Um, I didn't know any numbers by heart. And this is where my faith was tested on a very intense level. So I leave from out of the gym and I am distraught. I'm asking people questions. I'm trying to find out what happened, but no one is really able to tell me anything. But God began to work on my behalf and orchestrate behind the scenes. So the first person that I saw that I knew uh, was my Sunday school teacher who happens to be a police officer. The only thing that he could really do is have a conversation with me and talk with me about it and try to get details. But he eventually dropped me back off in my apartment, which I could not get in because I did not have my keys. So I literally had to wait in the parking lot until my roommate got back. And the only thing I could do is worship, talk to God and pray to him and just hope that he would help me to get my car back. So over the next three days, I found myself in intense prayer, intense devotion, intense um, requesting of God to help me to get my car back. But I didn't just stop there. I also put in the practical steps and I really felt like, you know, Sherlock Holmes or uh, some type of detective because the way the pieces came together was absolutely mind blowing. The day after the car was stolen, I used my roommate's car to go back up to the gym to see if I saw anything or could find out anything else. You wouldn't believe that as I'm driving my roommate's car, I pull up to a light and I see the people who stole my car in my car, like they're turning right in front of me. So I follow them, um, I try to you know, call the police and get the police to respond and intervene. Um, but the police don't come in time. And, you know, I don't want to put myself in a dangerous situation. The second day, someone found my phone and they gave me a call um, to let me know they found my phone. So when I got my phone back, I was able to get contacts um, to some people that I knew, uh, which would help me to get some further communication that I would get on the next day. And on the next day, I got a call from my bank back in Memphis, Tennessee, where I was from, 11, 12 hours away, that a principal, a school principal, had found my all of my cards, um, all of my cards in a parking lot. And 
that enabled me to start getting pieces of the things that I lost back. So as I mentioned, on the first day, I got my phone back. On the second day, I got my wallet and all of my cards back. By this particular time, my faith and my confidence is built. I'm going to get my car back. I'm going to get my car back. I'm just thanking the Lord along the way. And early third day in the morning, it's about three o'clock, I get a call from the police. And the police told me that they found my car. And it was unbelievable. Um, so me and my roommate, we uh, drove over and I was able to get my car back that morning. And um, it is a monument of how God continued to be with me and work out on my behalf in this new location that he moved me to. So I'm thankful for what this new location has brought me, the experience, um, the growth in my faith, um, my relationship with God. Even as I'm recording this video, as I look to my left, I can see the car that God restored to me. And I named her Miracle because it was something that God did. Um, it was a God work that allowed me to get my car back. And when you face situations like this, it's not so much about what is restored, it is about the restorer. And as I sit here, as I talk, God has been so faithful. He has sustained my car, He has sustained my faith, He has sustained my relationships, He has sustained my career, He has sustained everything that I need in this life of godliness. If you know where you are, is not allowing you to see and hear God and obey what he says. It's time to switch it up. It's time to change. Go to where God is telling you to go. Embrace the new experiences. Embrace the new horizons. Embrace the new trials. Embrace what God is telling you to do and where he's telling you to go. Because he has great plans for you great plans to do in and through you, but you must be willing to go.